Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome to FAIR TV. Let's talk about what we've seen in the news this week. Much of the corporate media's coverage of the election so far has been focused on the so-called gaffes. Mitt Romney's trip overseas was full of them, we're told, and Barack Obama has made his share, too. The most prominent Barack Obama gaffe, though, is a great lesson in how media fall down on what should be an easy part of their job. On July 13th, Obama apparently said this, if you've got a business, you didn't build that. Now, that would be a strange thing for him to say. What he actually said was this. Somebody helped to create this unbelievable American system that we had that allowed you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you've got a business, that, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. Well, that sure doesn't sound like an attack on business. It seems far more logical that Obama was saying that private businesses operate in a world full of things like roads and bridges, things that they didn't build. But many media accounts didn't dwell on the Romney campaign's distortion of that passage. Instead, media either passed on Romney's bogus edit, or they played it as a story about campaign tactics. Reporters admitted that, well, sure, in context, what Obama said wasn't exactly what Romney said he said, but hey, context is no match for effective messaging. And some outlets, like the New York Times, saw the whole thing as a matter of two grand conflicting visions about government. The fact that Romney's vision is based on a falsehood didn't matter as much as the fact that his attack seemed to be working. Journalism, we think, is supposed to be less concerned with campaign strategy and more interested in exposing lies. Well, you can always count on U.S. elite media to express alarm about the existence of left-wing governments in Latin America. This is usually presented as concern about those governments' commitment to democratic ideals. But how do you sound that alarm about left-wing threats to democracy when actual left-wing governments are being removed in anti-democratic coups? Well, that requires a certain kind of selectivity. The July 22nd Washington Post had a piece decrying Latin America's new authoritarians. Now, these leaders were, as the paper admits, democratically elected, but they nonetheless are, quote, charismatic populists who are posing the most serious challenge to democratic institutions in Latin America since the 1980s, when rebel wars and dictators were the norm, close quote. Now, hearing a reference to Latin America in the 1980s, you might recall that the serious threats to democracy were actually posed by the United States, which was fueling proxy wars and backing dictatorships. But that's not the relevant history here. What's of concern is that today's authoritarians oppose the United States and cozy up to its enemies. The fact is there are some pressing threats to democracy in Latin America. In fact, two elected left-wing presidents have been overthrown in Honduras and Paraguay. But neither of these figure into the Washington Post story about threats to Latin American democracy. It's not just the Washington Post either. Newsweek magazine had a remarkably similar piece a few days later full of the same worry about elected left-wing authoritarians. It's a reminder that when it comes to the Latin American left, media are often telling the exact same story. And finally, people with disabilities are virtually absent from the U.S. media as a rule. But sometimes there's a little window of opportunity around the anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, which was signed 22 years ago. Hopes were raised by, by a PBS NewsHour segment on July 26th that began by acknowledging that disabled workers lost jobs at five times the rate of other workers in the recession and are having more trouble finding new jobs. Truth is, none of the other networks did anything at all on the ADA, so the NewsHour was stepping outside the box by even mentioning it. They stepped back into the box, though, when it came time to talk about it, hosting a conversation between Iowa Senator Tom Harkin and a representative from the U.S. Business Leadership Network. Both said good things, to be sure. But you do have to wonder if efforts to include more people with disabilities in the workforce aren't hindered by big media's failure to include them in the conversation. This was FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for joining us.